John Jones has vacated the light heavyweight belt. A lot of fans, and one fighter in particular, is saying that he's scared, running to the heavyweight division to avoid the fighters in his own. On this week's episode of I Just Want to Talk, we're going to discuss that probability, research John's career, and try to determine, is John Jones scared? preface this whole video by saying John Jones grew up in the house with two older brothers, two older brothers that would eventually become NFL players. You know they got in fights, you know they wrestled in the basement, you know Jones got whooped by these brothers of his on the regular. This is a guy who was conditioned to not be scared of scary people. So let's look at John Jones' career as a mixed martial artist. John turned pro at 20 years of age and went 6-0 in only three months, finishing every one of his opponents. He then got the call to the UFC on two weeks notice to serve as a late replacement. He had turned 21 at this point. He won his UFC debut by unanimous decision and then signed to fight Stefan Bonner. Stefan was a huge name in the UFC at that time, one of the few household names the UFC had to offer. John also won that fight by unanimous decision. Uh, his third fight in the UFC, again still 21 years old, was against Jake O'Brien. He got his first finish in the UFC, winning by guillotine choke on the monumental UFC 100 card. Uh, Jake was a former heavyweight. He's a big old guy. And I think that here's a good time to say there's a few things to be scared of already in his career. Uh, he got called up to the UFC in four months. The biggest promotion in the world with the baddest dudes in the world. That's got to be pretty scary. Second fight with Stefan Bonner, a guy that he had heard of for years, I'm sure. That's pretty scary. And third, fighting on the UFC 100 card, one of the most popular cards, most publicized cards with some of the most eyes on it. Again, that's got to be pretty scary for a 21-year-old. From the age 22 to 23, John really starts to create his reputation. He gets a fight against Matt Hamill, who is a TKO machine and another pretty big name. Of course, this is that famous fight where John suffers the only loss of his career. He gets a loss because he beat somebody up too bad, that's how I've always put it. He then takes on Brandon Vera, who is a former WEC light heavyweight Grand Prix champion. Again, a very scary dude. TKOs him as the main event, John's first main event in his career. At 23 years old, he takes on Vladimir Matyashenko, wins that one by TKO pretty quickly, Again, as the main event, he then has the fight against Ryan Bader, a previously undefeated Ultimate Fighter winner, Ryan Bader, and gets him by guillotine choke. This propels John, still pretty young, still only 23 years of age, into the title fight against the legend Mauricio Shogun Hua, whom he beats by TKO, winning the light heavyweight belt and becoming the youngest champion ever. At 24 years of age, John has one of the most prolific years of his career. He takes on Rampage Jackson, former light heavyweight champ, beats him by a rear naked choke. Then Leota Machida, another former light heavyweight champion, beating him by a standing guillotine. And then takes on his old buddy, another former light heavyweight champion, in Rashad Evans, and beats him by decision. At 25, he beats another former light heavyweight champion in Vitor Belfort by Americana. He finishes up that year by beating Chael Sonnen by TKO. At 26 years of age, he has one of the closest fights of his career so far against Alexander Gustafson, beating him by decision, and then beating Glover Teixeira by decision as well. John is now 27, and things start to get a little rocky for him. He takes on the previously undefeated Daniel Cormier, and wins that fight by decision, but then he subsequently stripped the belt after eight successful title defenses. At 28 years old, he beats OSP to win the interim light heavyweight belt and then gets stripped of the belt again. And at 29 years old, nothing happens as he's serving suspensions and seemingly trying to get his life back on track. At 30 years old, he takes on Daniel Cormier again, winning by KO this time, winning the light heavyweight belts again, and being stripped again. Most recently, at 31 years old, John takes on Alexander Gustafson again, the closest fight to date, and he demolishes him. Beats him by TKO this time, 
and wins the UFC light heavyweight belt again. He then takes on Anthony Smith, wins this by decision, even though he absorbs a two-point deduction, and this marks the first time in Jones' whole career that he takes on a fighter younger than himself. He then takes on Tiago Santos and beats him by decision. At 32 years old, and bringing us to the most previous fight, he beats another previously undefeated fighter in Dominic Reyes. So a few pretty scary things that John had to face and overcome throughout this UFC career. First, as I mentioned earlier, he had his first UFC fight just four months into his professional career. That's insane. His last 15 fights have been as much exposure as you can get, all being for the belt, and he hasn't lost one of them yet. Uh, his first four title defenses were against former title holders. He's beaten six UFC light heavyweight champions in Shogun Hua, Rampage Jackson, Leota Machida, Rashad Evans, Vitor Belfort, and Daniel Cormier. He's also beaten three undefeated fighters in Ryan Bader, Daniel Cormier, and Dominic Reyes. He's also had a streak of six wins by finish, eight if you don't count that Matt Hamill disqualification, which I don't. I guess that's not a really scary fact, but it is interesting. Anyway, anybody who steps into that octagon has to put their fears aside. And John Jones is no exception. In fact, he may have had to do it more than most. So back to the topic of the video. John has vacated the light heavyweight belt, and he's moving up to heavyweight. Why'd he vacate the belt? Is he scared of the light heavies? Well, I gotta ask, who is he scared of? Dominic Reyes. John won a very close, unanimous decision over Reyes. Many thought that he lost it, and a lot of people are calling for a rematch. John has had two rematches in his career against Gustafson in D.C., and uh, both were unanimous decisions. They were rematches to unanimous decisions, and John dominated both of those rematches. He finished both of his opponents the second time around, John is an extremely intelligent fighter. Not only is he skilled, but he's very smart. He might be the best rematch fighter ever. We just don't have enough reference, but he very well may be. And to think that Dominic Reyes will be able to do something that Gus and DC were not able to do, I'm not buying. I think that in the rematch, John's going to mop the floor with them, and he's probably just not very excited about it. Of the top five contenders currently in the light heavyweight division, John's beaten four of them. The other one is Jan Blahovitz. Now, Jan is no doubt a threat to anybody, but if you want to apply some MMA math here, Jan and John have two shared opponents, Tiago Santos and Alexander Gustafson. Of course, John beat both of them. He beat Gus twice. Jan lost to both of them. So do we really think that fight's going to be competitive? I uh, maybe, but I don't think it's enough to say that John's scared of the man. So is John scared of up-and-coming light heavyweights like Yuri Prochaska? Uh, not to take anything away from Prochaska, but it does seem counterintuitive to me to say that he's scared of light heavyweights while simultaneously moving up to the scariest division of them all, heavyweights. John is not going to enter the heavyweight division as a low man on the totem pole. He won't be fighting dudes making their UFC debuts or with questionable records. His first heavyweight fight will likely be for the title or for the number one contender spot. He's going to be fighting people like Stipe Miocic, Francis Ngannou, maybe a Derek Lewis. All these guys are pretty scary dudes. So why is John going to move to heavyweight? Yeah, John has fought exclusively throughout his whole career as a light heavyweight uh, which spans over 12 years. He's always been big for the division anyway. He's now 33, like most of us. He's getting a little bit bigger. Although he's never had a problem with weight, he's never missed, you got to assume it's getting harder to make that weight. Uh, John's legacy cannot be questioned by what he's done in the octagon. Many people believe he's the greatest of all time. I kind of agree with that. But one way or another, he's undoubtedly the greatest light heavyweight of all time. John has said he wants more money, and when he asked for it, the UFC said, go to heavyweight. And he appears to be doing just that. Really, the only thing that's missing from John Jones's resume, from his career, from that legacy, from that exceedingly long list of credentials, is two belts 
in different divisions. So why is John Jones going to heavyweight? For legacy, and probably for a little bit of money too. Is he running up there because he's scared? Absolutely not. This dude is not afraid of anything or anybody. He's taken all comers and he's beaten them all. In the world of MMA, there's always plenty to talk about. On this show, I just want to talk. We'll discuss a lot of these topics on a weekly basis. We got some good episodes coming up. We'll discuss Tyron Woodley and all the crazy <laughs> he's saying. We'll talk about Hamzat Shemaya getting not one, but two fights scheduled. In the build up to Dominic Reyes versus Jan Blahovitz, we'll talk about titles changing hands and what you gotta do to secure one. We'll discuss future events and the fighters on it. Of course, we do predictions of each UFC event and afterwards a breakdown of the winners and losers. We'll stay topical being inspired by MMA news and fights coming up. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date and notified of every time a new video is uploaded. Make sure you check out all the previous episodes too. Oops.